Well, the woman who walked onto a Russian TV news set last night holding up an anti-war protest sign said this today after she was released from police custody. It was my own anti-war decision. Yeah, if I made this decision by myself because I uh, uh, don't like um, Russia, Russia start this uh, invasion and um, it was really terrible. Last night, Marina Osianakova walked into history by walking onto the set of Russia's most watched news program on Channel One, which was being hosted by Vladimir Putin's favorite. Russian propaganda presenter. Российский премьер подчеркнул, надо усилить сотрудничество в рамках союзного государства, а на совещании в правительстве обсуждали, как сохранить доступность границы. Her sign said, from top to bottom, no war, stop the war, don't believe propaganda, they're lying to you, Russians against war. Marina Osianakova was detained by Russian police for 14 hours. During most of that time, no one had any idea where she was, and lawyers could not find her. Today, Marina appeared in a Moscow court and was found guilty of a misdemeanor and fined 30,000 rubles, which is now worth about $280. The charge she faced in court today had nothing to do with the protest that she mounted on television. Instead, she was charged with posting this video before she walked onto the set. То, что сейчас происходит на Украине, это преступление. И Россия страна агрессор. И ответственность за эту агрессию лежит на совести только одного человека. И этот человек Владимир Путин. Мой отец украинец, моя мать русская. И они никогда не были врагами. И это ожерелье на моей шее, как символ того, что Россия должна немедленно остановить братоубийственную войну. И наши братские народы еще смогут примириться. К сожалению, последние годы я работала на Первом канале, занимаясь кремлевской пропагандой. И мне сейчас очень стыдно за это. Стыдно за то, что позволяла говорить ложь с экрана телевизора. Стыдно за то, что позволяла зомбировать русских людей. Мы промолчали в 2014 году, когда все это только начиналось. Мы не вышли на митинги, когда Кремль отравил Навального. Мы просто безмолвно наблюдали за этим античеловеческим режимом. И сейчас от нас отвернулся весь мир. И еще 10 поколений наших потомков не отмоются от позора этой братоубийственной. After Marina was released from custody today, she said this. I want to thank everyone for their support, my friends and colleagues. These were uneasy days of my life because I spent two days without sleep. The interrogation lasted for more than 14 hours. I was not allowed to contact my relatives or provided with any judicial help. I was in a rather tough situation. All the comments will be made tomorrow. I just need to rest today. Today, the Russian news agency TASS reported that Marina could face criminal charges for her protest on television. In his daily video address today, Ukraine's President Zelensky said this about Marina's protest. I am thankful to those Russians that do not cease trying to get the truth out, who fight against disinformation and tell the truth, tell real facts to their friends, relatives, and personally to the girl who entered the studio of Channel One with a poster against the war, to those who are not afraid to protest before your country closes totally from the rest of the world, turning into a very big North Korea. You need to fight. You shouldn't miss your own chance. Joining us now, Dmitry Piskunov, who is a lawyer for OVD Info, a Russian human rights organization supporting Marina Osianakova, and Jason Corcoran, a longtime Moscow-based reporter. Uh, Dmitry, let me begin with you. And the lawyers' search yesterday looking for Marina, you were part of a team, big team of lawyers who were looking for her. Uh, how long did that take? It lasted for approximately 15 hours. Uh, we were looking for her everywhere. The problem was that we couldn't get in touch with her. Uh, and uh, there was a lot of information about her being in one police station or the other. Uh, and uh, we had four lawyers on the ground, uh, two from our organizations, and they separated looking for different locations. However, uh, 
the information that we received was not true. She was kept at a completely different uh, location, uh, and we could only find out about it when uh, she appeared in the courtroom. And why wasn't she charged with a crime for running onto the TV set? Uh, because for that uh, uh, action, uh, if she was uh, prosecuted by the court in the administrative misdemeanor procedure, she would not be able to be uh, prosecuted criminally. Uh, and uh, that means that she is still facing a danger of uh, prison sentence. So she may still be prosecuted for what she did on television? Exactly. That is the problem now. And uh, in the worst case scenario, uh, she could be facing up to 15 years of prison time. Uh, Jason Corcoran, uh, there, there was a theory today that uh, perhaps she wasn't yet charged with uh, the crime of walking onto the television because uh, the authorities did not want to bring more attention uh, to what she did on television. That's a good point, Lawrence. Um, there's a fear now that the propaganda facade in Russia is breaking, that this moment today for Marina Ossiankova could be the I am Spartacus moment, that her actions could cascade and we could see more of her colleagues do similar. We saw it in 2014 when there was the annexation of Crimea and the war in eastern Ukraine. There was a number of journalists who worked for Russia Today, or T in bureaus in London and in New York who resigned on air. That was bad enough, but when they're doing it on domestic TV, which is essential to uh, Putin's propaganda war, it is very dangerous for his, for his conflict overseas. And uh, you tweeted about some others, uh, Jason, uh, on Russian journalism who are also uh, either protesting or quitting. Yeah, there's been two other journalists, colleagues of Marina's on First Channel, who have reportedly resigned today, according to the insider investigative journalists who are now based overseas, of course, and also NTV. NTV TV channel is probably the most mendacious uh, of all of the propaganda outlets in Moscow. And two of their journalists are apparently now in exile, uh, along with many other journalists who are fleeing by the day. Uh, Dimitri, as lawyers, um, what can you offer to uh, people like Marina and others uh, who might do this? What, what legal hope can you offer them in Russian courts? Unfortunately, Russian courts are extremely dependent on the Russian authorities. And uh, basically, they perform uh, no real judicial process. It's only a facade. And uh, at the moment, uh, we can at least uh, try to minimize the damage. We can try to get a lesser sentence. We can uh, try and get a lesser fine. Uh, however, uh, at the moment, it is uh, uh, out of the realm of possibility to uh, be acquitted in the Russian court for actions like this. And Dimitri, what is it like for you lawyers who represent people like this in Russian courts uh, are you taking a chance yourself just by representing clients like this? Uh, there is a general sentiment among the uh, lawyers community that uh, our job, our uh, field of work uh, is um, becoming more and more meaningless in Russia, unfortunately. However, uh, we still hope that there are some uh, little things that could be done that could be important to the individual we're depending. Dmitry Piskunov and Jason Corcoran, thank you both very much for joining us tonight.